Aloha, I'm Cam Moore, and welcome to this brief introduction and incomplete history of computing for ICS 111. So, what is a computer? Basically, the definition of a computer is one who com computes. So, back in the day, before the 19th century, the person or the things that do the computing were people, humans. So, we had simple tools, abacus, um, slide rules, uh, trigonometry and then mathematical tables because it was very easy or very difficult to calculate these logarithms and trigonometric cosines and sines of things, but they're very valuable in doing important math about uh, navigation or astronomy or even just simply doing multiplication using logarithms is, is just simple addition versus having to do the multiplication. And so we had some simple tools, very powerful tools, but simple tools of you know using an abacus or a slide rule and having these tables of the answers to these mathematical functions. So you would, if you wanted to find the cosine of an angle, you would open up the right page and look it up and it would, you would have a, the answer. Now the problem is, to build these tables, you had to actually do the math. So they had rooms or large groups of people that would actually just stand there doing the math to build the book, the tables. Well, there was a lot of errors in these tables just because humans often make mistakes when they do things. You have a transposition of numbers when you write down the number. You made a mistake in the algorithm. And so it was known that these wonderful tables had errors in them, but that was basically what you had to use to do the math or you did it yourself. So you tried to use these tables and it was known that there was these errors in these tables. So there was a need to uh, get rid of the human error in those calculations. So in the mechanical area, the late 18th century, there were a lot of work on getting the, not, the errors out of the equations, out of the math. And there were several people that were working on different concepts that are very powerful in computer science today. Gottfried Leibniz came up with the theory of binary numbers and how to use formal logic. He came up with calculating machines. He actually developed a stepped reckoner that it did the four operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to help his business to get his, ma his uh, accounts better. So he had a very profound effect on modern computing with the idea or the working on binary numbers and formal logic. Uh, in the 19th century, George Boole worked on differential equations and also formalized the Boolean logic of and, or, and not, and that is basic, uh, one of the basis of modern computing. Uh, in the late 19th century, there was a lot of work on developing tools, again, to help automate these processes that are normally done by people and to remove some of the errors that people inject into these processes. The Pascaline is a simple machine uh, devised by Pascal, who was named uh, Jacques Pascal, who uh, the Pascal language was named after. The Jacquard Loom used punch cards to program the weave pattern. And so there would be these long, you can see that in the middle here, the long list of these punch cards that would set the weave of the machine while the, um, so you would actually program the weaving machine to produce the pattern. Uh, Babbage produced the difference engine, didn't actually eventually build it, but came up with the idea of a difference engine that would do these mathematical equations. He also came up with the analytical engine that used some of the ideas of these punch cards to have instructions that tell you how to do the actual math or the operations and the idea of data cards that allowed you to store different values for your functions. So that's the idea of separating the instructions and the data, which is actually another highly, uh, is a thing that happens a lot in computer science these days. And then in the electronic era, in the 30s, we had Kurt Godel and his theories of re recursion, breaking down a problem and doing the same things again and again to it until finally you find the simplest answer and then building back the answer. Vanny Bar Bush came up with the Memex idea. He didn't actually, was unable to implement it, but he had the imp idea of hypertext where you have a link that connects you to another page. Basically, the idea of the World Wide Web. 
uh, came up with ideas of how you would have a, everybody would have a personal computer, they would be networked together, and he wrote uh, a lot of stuff on that, and it was very powerful ideas that were later implemented. In the 40s, Claude Shannon worked on Boolean algebra, so we can do the math, binary arithmetic, which again helps us with the what the computers of today actually use, and information theory about the um, how much information can be stored or used, and a lot of very powerful ideas by Claude Shannon. Uh, in the 30s, backing up, we they started developing electronic. Uh, computers that were designed to do several things. The Anastoff Berry computer did math. Uh, the bomb is a decryptor for work during World War II. Colossus was also another decryptor. ENIAC was a large uh, computer that you actually had to program by changing the wires and how they were connected. Um, in the 40s and 50s, Alan Turing, who developed the bomb, came up with the idea of a stored program computer where the program and the data are in the computer. He came up with the idea of a Turing machine that has the idea that you have this memory tape, which is your memory, and then you have a very simple moving CPU that takes a look at the value of the thing, does some math, basically as a state machine, and then can update the tape. Um, it has been shown that the Turing machine is actually a complete computer. You can do everything you need to do if your machine is a Turing machine. He came up with the Turing test to decide whether or not an artificial intelligence program is actually um, aware or uh, is can fool a human being. That's what the Turing test is about, is whether people talking to an art program think that they're talking to another person. Uh, then we have von Neumann, who again did his uh, report on the Edback machine and codified the von Neumann architecture where we have input, a central processing unit, memory unit, the uh, stored computer, or the program is in the memory unit with the data, uh, the central processor accesses the memory and is able to change the memory. So it's somewhat similar to a Turing machine. Um, same concept and then you have output. Um, again, now we're saying that computers are now doing more of the computation because we have these machines, these electronic devices that are able to do more of the math than we have to do. Uh, in the 30s, or then they came up with the Univac, which had a lot of new features, uh, vacuum tubes instead of mechanical relays, uh, magnetic tape storage, um, as you can see in the lower picture, uh, and then also the idea of punch cards, which goes back to uh, the Jacquard Loom um, and the analytical engine, but the idea is that you would write your program or your instructions on these punch cards, and then the computer would read them in uh, basically as a big long tape, and that would be how you program your computer. Instead of having to actually physically modify the machine, you could modify the program using these punch cards or magnetic tape. A uh, big part of that whole series is we take this huge machine that weighs tons and tons, and we take it from vacuum tubes, which are, can, we can miniaturize the vacuum tubes. We could then replace the vacuum tubes with transistors, and then we can replace those, or we can now start etching those transistors onto silicon, and we can basically shrink the computer while increasing the power. And we, that's where we have the famous Moore's Law, where the um, processing power will double every 18 months or so, because we're shrinking the uh, size of the transistor so we can have more transistors in the same space. In the 60s and 70s, Douglas Engelbart was a very powerful or visionary person. He invented things like the mouse. He didn't invent hypertext, but he implemented a system that used hypertext. The idea between hypertext was back to Bonnie Bar Bush. Implemented network computing, um, Ethernet. He had a GUI program, a, a program, a interface that used a graphical user interface instead of just text, and a lot of ideas between human computer interaction. So he was a very influential person in computing history. 
Uh, now we get to the late, uh, early or late 90s and now, and basically we've shrunk our computers down, but the big thing that happened in this area is we, we networked our computers. So they weren't standalone by themselves. They're now talking to each other. They're now working together. Um, we're storing our information on the internet or in the cloud. Uh, we're having multiple computers working on the same problem. Um, the SETI at home has people using their home computers to try to solve these big problems. Uh, we've got mobile devices. Everybody's got, most everybody's got a mobile device. Um, how many of you actually know how to do long division or do long division anymore? We have a machine or a device that does the computing for us. So what's next? Well, basically, what happens when humans do none of the computing, where we let the computer do, or the machine becomes, does all the computing, AI. Um, it's a very interesting and potentially scary thing is if we don't know how to do the computing or how did that decision get made. We have no idea why that decision was made because all the computing was done by a machine. So that's a very brief and incomplete and probably mostly inaccurate history of computing.